You want me to go to Las Vegas at once. Make contact with the Portuguese photographer on the Cerdo. As your attorney, I advise you to rent a very fast car with no top. Mm -hmm. And you'll need the cocaine. What kind of story is this? It's the Min 400. It's the richest off-road race for motorcycles and dune buggies in the history of organized sport. The race was definitely underway. I had witnessed the start. I was sure of that much. Are you ready for that? Checking into a Vegas hotel under a phony name with intent to commit capital fraud and a head full of acid? I sure hope so. Strange memories on this nervous night in Las Vegas. Has it been five years? Six? It seems like a lifetime. The kind of peak that never comes again. Lucy paints portraits of Barbara Streitz. God bless. We were riding the crest of a high and beautiful wave. I want you to throw that fucking radio into the tub with me. finally broke and rolled back. Welcome in, everybody, to that movie show. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so glad we're here. Mike Went, Liam Stryker, up, Bill everybody? Neville behind the board. <sighs> And uh, today we're on the edge of the desert. When the drugs are about to take hold, we're in fear and loathing in Las Vegas yeah. 1998. Vegas month continues. Oh, very fun. You know, it, this the, is a very fun movie. The, the lame part about this entire situation is, is that we're all building to like going to Las Vegas, but only you're going to Las Vegas. I mean, you guys are more than welcome. Vegas is an open city. Look, man. here's the thing. Did I get invited to go to this bachelor party? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, you actually did. <laughs> but I don't have the money to go. Well, that is the problem. That is half the problem. And and when you travel with my friend Will, few of us have the money. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure he explained that to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sponsors? Possibly uh, you. Right? Po exactly. We should. We should just see if he wants to sp Don't get them think to I haven't reached out to Hash House of Go-Go. <laughs> <laughs> Their flagship location in Las Vegas. Oh, <laughs> uh, look, if we can make that Can happen. I just eat there all week? I don't have the money. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the money. But Please. yes, uh, because uh, I am uh, lucky enough, I guess, to spend all my money in Vegas at the end of the month, we're doing Vegas movies. Yeah. And it seemed like as good a theme as any. Yeah, why not? <laughs> to get these movies out of the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and today we're doing uh, 1998's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Released May 22nd, 1998. Had a budget of $18.5 million. Very modest budget for not only the movie that it was, but the time it was made in. Uh, came back with only 13.7, but made a shitload more on DVDs. And it, had, it was one of those cult followings. Yes. I will give it that credit. Yeah. Uh, it came out around the same time as Lebowski, and it was one of those, it was in that cult status where people just didn't get it when it hit the theaters, right. mostly because if you watch the trailer, if, if you know YouTube allows the trailer to run with this, uh, if you watch the trailer, it doesn't really represent the movie. Well, this movie is batshit insane. Right. It looks like a comedy road movie that's it like fun-loving two guys. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a buddy movie, man. It's like, it, no. You don't realize that the second half is just dirty, grimy, adrenochrome fucking laden acid trip. Yeah, I, I don't remember when in the movie it happened. Full of hairy beasts with sick tits on their back. Yeah, somebody <laughs> turns into a lizard at some point. Like, this movie's nuts. It's a mess. It was directed, of course, by the master of mess, Terry Gilliam, yeah. of Monty Python fame and many others, 12 Monkeys to name a few. Uh, written written by many people. Don Quixote. <laughs> Don Quixote, yes, it's coming out. Did he? Yeah, but he didn't direct it, right? He's been trying. Yeah, he was. He was directing it for a while. Yeah, I don't think he finished it. <laughs> I, I remember uh, there was. I uh, saw the Don Quixote. Uh, Lost in La Mancha. 
that one was that the one with Johnny Depp? The Lost in La Mancha, yeah, is the was a documentary, documentary about it about the movie with Johnny Depp, and now yeah. he's kind of finished it, or somebody has finished somebody it. Somebody has finished the movie with Adam I, Driver. Yes, so, so I think it's somebody different. Google is your friend, yeah, and it's not ours right at the moment. Yeah. Uh, um, written by many people, uh, the the only two that really are of note are Terry Gilliam, who rewrote Alex Cox strip uh, script. Alex Cox, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Alex Cox, <laughs> Alex Cox strip. Stripped. Yeah, it's going to be a weird, weird show today. Uh, Alex Cox, who of course was uh, famous for directing Sid and Nancy, the Sid, yeah. Sid Vicious movie. Uh, yeah. He he had this one for a while, and creative differences with Hunter Thompson led to him losing it. Right. And basically, but everyone was cast. Everyone was all on board. Alex Cox was making the movie, and Terry Gilliam jumped in last minute because they just couldn't come to a creative impasse, right. if you will. And he rewrote it in like a week. Oh, jeez. The whole script. But basically, the way he rewrote it was very authentically based on, of course, the book Fear and Loathing Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. Stars Johnny Depp, Benito del Toro, and a slew of cameos we will get to. I know, jeez. And, uh, and and this is... Uh, it's, one, it's one of those movies that I, I call my favorite movie. Okay. Um, because it, not only is it oddly relatable to me, um, but it's also one of those movies I can just pick up whenever and just watch. Yeah, because... Despite plot... it being a fucking mess. Well, the thing is, is the plot's incoherent, so you can literally jump in at any time. It's fun. Oh, yeah, sure. It's, it's just fun. It's a sure. barrel of fun. Sit, sitting at home with a, with a few beers, and it's like, you know what? I just want to fuck off for a while. This is the movie to do it to. The funny thing is, is that the first time I ever saw this movie, it, I confused this with leaving Las Vegas... Oh, that's a mistake. Yeah, and so the how did that not come up in any of our discussions? By the way, <laughs> leaving Las Vegas because we were just talking it's about very... our, our last Vegas movie after the Hangover, uh, and that didn't even possibly enter our uh, realm of our four. No, four thinking. I thought about it, but it's too depressing to have it be the last one. I I honestly hope it's not the end of my Vegas story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's I'm, on you. I'm terrified if it is. <laughs> that's on you, but maybe I'll play you and we'll have a... Uh, there you go. We'll have, I'll get an Oscar for it. You'll have and to then throw I'll your voice. And then I'll do Con Air. Oh, very nice. <laughs> You'll throw your voice for, for that one? Yeah, yeah, I will. Liam and the other guy. <laughs> Liam and the other guy. Yeah, I'll play it. Well, look, here's the thing. If, like, you know, Eddie Murphy can play, like, 15,000 guys in a movie, I can do it. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I can play myself and you. You're Eddie Murphy. Uh, close enough, right? Liam Stryker <laughs> is claiming to be Eddie Murphy. Closer than you think. Closer than you think. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for the only person that picked up on my extremely subtle joke. I got mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, okay. It went right over Mike's head. I yeah. did. Yeah. He still it, doesn't. It, get it. I, I, I don't. We'll tell you off air. <laughs> tell I, you I, I don't. Or I can mute the mics for a second. I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't understand it. And I'm not going to try to. Understand It'd be really it. funny if your mouths were moving yeah. and you nobody could in, hear anything. In, <laughs> in the wonderful and and prolific words of Lucille Bluth, I don't understand it and I will not respond to it. One really fun thing that happens in this movie is later there was that movie where Johnny Depp played a gecko. Uh, Rango. Rango. And yep. he ends up falling on the uh, the windshield of... Rango was very inspired by his Hunter Thompson performance. Yeah, it was. Uh, th there's like whole theses, if you look online, yeah, that, about the, the cross. I mean, the fact that Rango's wearing a Hunter Thompson shirt, the same exact one that right. he's wearing. Well, he at one point flops onto the... Onto the hood of... The Corvette, yeah. or the whatever, the convertible. The Great Red Shark. Yeah. The Great Red Shark. Oh, God. It's this movie... It's so... Oh, God. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's just go. Let's, Let's just go. go. I'm going to react, and you just tell me. Well, okay. So, so <laughs> I want you to react to this, actually, because uh, as I mentioned last week, I don't even know if you guys remember this, um, but I spent uh, 14 days uh, on a trip between Switzerland and Germany. <laughs> okay. And on that trip, I spent about uh, 85 to 90% of the time doing Johnny Depp doing Hunter Thompson. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it was a extremely alcohol and drug fuel trip, uh, which started from the moment we got to Logan Airport, and <clears throat> it was uh, hmm, how do I put this? Let's see. When we arrived at Logan Airport, <laughs> <laughs> we got up to baggage claim and checked our bags. Our friend Mike, his mother worked at British Air. So they upgraded us to business class and checked us right into the bar 
area, the business bar. We decided to drink them out of Jack Daniels, as you do. As you do. As we got to the check-in, stumbling, bumbling, three jacked-up weirdos, all, all high on Jack Daniels, were escorted right onto the plane. No problem. The uncle that we were with of a friend of mine, he was, had all kinds of security badges, got strip search. It was weird. We got ushered right off. Put on the first, first row of business class. Intolerable Cruelty was the movie I watched from US to London, nine hour flight. I watched it six times. It got funnier every single time. We drank the plane out of Jack Daniels as well. Had to switch to Johnny Walker. At a certain point in the flight, my friend Ryan's uncle said, hey, can my son go up, up to business class and sit with his, his cousin, the flight attendant. Are those the guys making all the noise and drinking all the Jack Daniels? Yes. He can go up there and sit as long as he's quiet and doesn't say anything. So we had the young boy up with us. He sat, laughed, watched, took video. I had a camera at the time. This is all documented. Oh. Oh, yeah. What the fuck was that? I don't know. Jesus Christ, I said. As the plane hit turbulence. We landed in London. I spent about 30 minutes there. Spent $14 on a Big Mac. U.S. It was weird. We made it to Switzerland. The part of this trip that I really want to highlight is a dinner party we went to. Dinner party was hosted by friends of Ryan's uncle. We had to walk through their, uh, their vault-like entrance. Legitimately, it was a bank vault. Apparently, these people worked in high-end the Swiss government. We got there. It was mostly fondue. You know, hot cheese. Yeah. We drank a lot of beer. Yep. Had a lot of wine. At one point in the night, a man pulls out a bottle. Says, you guys like to do shots. Fucking right, I said. Pulls out the bottle. It was a clear wine-shaped bottle. Masking tape on it. T-R-A-C-H-E. Trash. He said, my, my father-in-law made this for our wedding. We took two shots at our wedding. That was three years ago. We haven't touched it since. We finished the bottle in about an hour. Man, were we fucked up. We started asking, uh, you ever heard of this place called Zeus? It's a club. We found it online. He hadn't known about it. So it's banging on the wall. Guy comes over. He starts telling us these weird stories about being blown up in planes and train crashes, being shot 47 okay. times. I swear to God. Weird shit. So, I'm videotaping the whole fucking conversation. Found out later that if he had known and not been so fucked up that I was videotaping, I'd probably be dead. Okay. He's that high in the weird Swiss government. Okay. He says, give me, give me five minutes. Goes back to his place. We sit there, continue drinking wine. And trash? Trash. Well, no, no. Trash was well gone. Oh. The trash was well gone. The wine was still flowing. Okay. So he comes back with a bag. Bag full of cookies. So that's passing the cookies around the table. So everybody take one. Don't give it to the kid. Don't give it to the dog. Just eat it. I don't know what we took. 15 minutes later, my friend is making out with the host's wife while the host is holding her hand. <coughs> weird as shit. Again, I can say this because I get it all on video. It's a true story. So we re-enter re that question about, have you ever heard of this place called Zeus? Everybody looks at us like we got three fucking heads. Zeus, I said. Z-E-U-S, Zeus. And the guy at the end of the table who has been blown up 47 times and shot by mercenaries says, oh, toys. So whatever the fuck you call it, man. I call it Zeus. You call it toys. Do you know of it? I'll be right back. Goes outside, makes a phone call, comes back. We leave in 10 minutes. We'll take my car. We get into the back of his BMW, black, leather seats, soft as fuck. We're driving about what I could only imagine was 90 to 100 miles an hour, giggling in the back seat like little fucking girls. All of this, again, on videotape. Okay. High as all fucking hell. I have no idea what drugs we were on. But we were really drunk, really fucking high. We get to a club. This is where the shit starts to get really weird. We go up to the counter, shake the guy behind the counter's hand. He pulls out four pairs of slippers, four pairs of robes. Says, take a shower, put these on. 
come out later. Fucking hell, I thought. We put our shit in lockers, took a shower, put on a robe, put on slippers. Being that guy, I kept my sunglasses on. Came out to the club. Everybody in the club, what looked like a normal American strip club, was wearing bathrobes. So, as you can imagine, it looked like a normal American strip club, just with a lot more hanging balls. We sit down, order more Jack and Cokes. And we're trying to survey the situation. While high as fuck, by the way. Again, don't know what it is. Maybe mescaline. Maybe hash. I don't fucking know. Whatever you bake into cookies, I don't really know. Yeah. We're, we're really fucking high. Hash house go Sure. Women coming by. Left, right, center. Again, like a normal strip club. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. No, I'm good. Got my Jack and Coke. At the time I was smoking cigarettes. We're watching the stage. Normal strip club stage. Is a stage, pole, stairs, Got as it. you do. Got it. Woman gets up on stage, starts dancing. Okay, this is normal. I'm, I'm in my headspace. That needs to be. All of a sudden, guy looks like a customer. Starts walking towards the stage. Starts walking up the steps. Halfway up the steps, he drops his fucking robe. I'm thinking, oh, this guy's going to get his fucking ass kicked. There's no fucking way they're going to allow him to do anything like this. She grabs the pole, bends over. He starts fucking her in the ass. I think to myself, Jesus Christ, we are not in America anymore. This keeps going on for a while. My friend, balls hanging out, making out with some girl on the couch. All right. As you do. As you do. I get up, I go to the bar, get myself another Jack and Coke. By the way, we weren't paying for any of this. Yeah, you're a government friend. The, 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 the guy who has been shot by mercenaries 47 times, but still is living to take us to a sex club, is paying for all of this. I'm sitting at the bar, having my Jack and Coke. Yeah. Watching it all. By the way, wearing sunglasses, in a bathrobe, and slippers. In a nightclub. In a nightclub. Woman walked by, statuesque blonde, big fucking tits. I lost my ever-loving shit. I said, you! Game over. We go in the back. Well, there's a room full of mirrors. I'm going to skip this part. <laughs> there was a room full of mirrors! Anyway, uh, have you ever seen American Psycho? Yes. You know that scene where Christian Bale looks in the mirror and he's flexing and pointing at himself? Yes. Put that in your head and that was me. Anyway, wearing sunglasses. Come back out. Oh, yeah. Ah. Thank you, Bill. Come back out. Sit back down. Wearing my robe. Balls everywhere. Of course. Still wearing sunglasses. Smoking cigarettes. Woman sitting on my friend's lap. I didn't know what they were saying, but it was also around that time where the Chappelle show was very popular. Yeah, okay. Put you in a time frame. What I didn't know was she was whispering to him, asking him what drugs I was on. Is he on, is he on meth? Yeah, he probably was. And, and my friend's like, no. Is he on cocaine? Now again, not hearing that, but just having that instinct timing. Yeah, right. My head lurches back, again, wearing sunglasses. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. And she just looked and gave me a high five. Fair enough. Night goes on. We get our shit, get back dressed, and that ruthless fucking bastard left us in the lurch. Okay. We had no ride home. We're in the middle of Switzerland. We don't know what, where you, where are. we are, how to speak the language. By the way, it was about 2004. Cell phones weren't really a common thing, let right. alone in Europe. Yeah, right. And Uber is not a thing. No. So we're standing there, Americans, without a fucking ride. Yeah. Club was closed. We had no way to call for our fucking cab. We didn't even know where we were staying. We see a fucking bros, see a group of bros walking over to a cab. Let's do this. My friend Ryan puts his head down, barrels through one of them, knocks him into the bushes. We jump in the back of the car and say, fucking drive, man. Somehow we got back, ended our night at another strip club, right by our hostel in Switzerland. Okay. That was one night. <laughs> yes. And mind you, I spent the entire night doing Johnny Depp's voice, doing Hunter S. Thompson's voice. It's great. That was one night oh, God. in Switzerland. That sound also sounds like a porn. For more on that, <laughs> yeah. we need a new podcast. <laughs> yeah. Follow that Mike's High show. Um, yeah, and so that's also the plot, oddly enough, 
of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's so, why I wanted. To, that's why I was waiting to tell it. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah. We're out of here. So so ba- yes. So uh, <laughs> so that was that was kind of why I've been waiting to tell this fucking story. Yeah. Uh, because it was it was uh, it was this movie. It, yeah, like actually, it was my experience of this movie. It was just yeah. get, getting high and running amok through a foreign city or country in this case, right? Uh, uh, an uh, out of water experience, right? On Thank you for drugs. music, by the way, Bill. Yeah, because that's really what this movie is: is that it's really tough to kind of pinpoint exactly what's going on, except for man takes a ton of drugs and goes to Vegas. So, so the actual story was uh, Hunter S. Thompson was contracted was a freelance writer. He was contracted by Rolling Stone magazine to cover the Mint Four Hundred motorcycle yeah. race in Las Vegas. Right. Uh, he took it upon himself and his attorney slash uh, drug co- dealer, or whatever. Dr- dr- well, drug cohort at the yeah. time. He wasn't yeah. a dealer; he was a lawyer, actually. That's right. Uh, Oscar Azeda Costa was his actual name. Uh, that are portrayed by Depp and Benito del Toro as Raul Duke and Doctor Gonzo uh, to just run amok. Right, run amok on Las Vegas. Uh, rent a car, uh, and, and they drove. Yeah, of course, they drove. Oh. I mean, it was a, it was the sixties. Come on, yeah, right. Seventies, I guess it was seventy one. Right. So, I mean, you know, Jesus, drunk driving wasn't even a thing. Yeah, right. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you're right about that. I don't so, even think cars had seatbelts at that point. No. <laughs> if they did, they were they were for pussies. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so they uh, so they head out to the desert and. Uh, uh, along the way, meet a hitchhiker. Yeah, who had never mm-hmm. ridden in a convertible before. Yep. Uh, this hitchhiker, played by Tobey Maguire, the, f- <sighs> the first of many cameos. Yes. Uh, he's wearing a uh, well, it, a Mickey Mouse shirt. Yeah. It was uh, because, of course, they weren't going to get the rights to Disney or Mickey Mouse. Uh, Ralph Steadman, who did the artwork for the book, uh, created this uh, Gonzo-style Mickey Mouse. Oh, that's right. Yep. Um, so fun story about this is while they're driving, not only did they almost kill Toby Maguire in the moment where he tries to jump out of the car. Right. Because he jumps out of the car for no reason. Well, there, there was the when they swerved on the road and he got right. scared and kind of lurched. He legitimately yeah. lurched a little too far and Johnny Depp had to pull him back into the actual right. moving fucking car. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't kill Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, but because of okay. Spider-Man, uh, he had to come back for reshoots. And because it wasn't worked into his contract, it would have cost them fifteen grand to actually shave his head for the the hair piece. Oh, right. So because they didn't want to pay that, because they were already getting into the budget, the into the budget a little bit, uh, they decided, all right, we'll put a ball cap on him and a, and a bad wig, and then we'll digitally move the hairline and stuff like that. They ended up paying a lot more in digital fees of after, they did. <laughs> after the fact. Of course they would they have did. just been better off spending there's fifteen a, grand to shave his fucking head. Yeah, there's a thing that they always say in filming where if somebody says we'll fix it in post, they won't fix it in post. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so they're they're moving along at, at quite a speed, uh, heavy into the backcountry. Uh, in the in a red Chevy Impala convertible, and yes, as the opening narration says, they were somewhere on the edge of the desert when right. the drugs began to take hold. Yeah, and they're yeah, it's bananas because uh, they eventually make it to Vegas, and the only thing I can think of, and I believe it's here, is is this the beginning part where they find that everybody he sees everybody's lizard people? Yep, that was when they were trying trying to check into the hotel. Yeah, okay, I just. Yeah. God, every single time I'm there, like, there's, I mean, there is so much happening that I'm, I'm honestly as happy as I am that we're doing this movie. I'm a little upset we're not just doing a commentary. Of this movie. We should because there, there's moment to moment, uh, Benicio del Toro trying to lick his hand and then try to put a little bit of coke out of a salt shaker on his hand in a convertible while driving. Yeah, shockingly, it all blows out. Yeah, and he just yells, "Did you see what God did to us?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, uh, of course, in, in classic response, uh, God didn't do that. You did it. You're a fucking narcotic. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just this entire movie, and I'm trying to think of like other weird nonsense. People just are constantly turning into shit. Yeah. Because we constantly. Because we're on acid. We're on acid and we're getting 
POV shots of people, yep. and it's just like, oh, none of this is real. So, so they get to the Mint, Mint uh, Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, and uh, they're, they're checking in because they, they have to get there fast so they can check in and get their press credentials. Right. Because they have their soundproof suite, which, which is paid for by Rolling Stone. Yeah, that's right. And they have to get there. And they show up, head full of acid. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're, they're checking in, and again, there's another, uh, who's the... Who's the desk clerk there? Uh, I'm trying to pull it up. There, like I said, there's so yeah. many fucking cameos. Um, uh, the f- seven, the the Sven, the Flamingo Hotel clerk was uh, yes, that was uh, Christopher Maloney, but that's yeah. much no, well that's into much it. Much later, uh, Catherine Hellman was the desk desk clerk at the Mint. Yeah, uh, the one that turns into a lizard woman and is yeah. all like, acidy and, oh, and shit weird. like that. Yeah, and uh, you know, of course, they go yep. to the bar waiting for the hotel room, and the whole bar turns into fucking lizards, literally fucking. <laughs> yep, it's just a weird orgy of lizard people having sex. A blood-soaked floor, which yeah. they need golf shoes to get through. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Order some fucking golf shoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, yeah, yep. <laughs> they end up getting to the hotel room. Uh, Craig Burko plays uh, Lacerda, the, f- yep. the, the photographer. Who, oh, yeah. Who, despite his name, is not fucking Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In a great... Just random blurting out of a revelation as he, as uh, Johnny Depp's hiding behind a television set, which is showing war films. Yeah. <laughs> You're not fucking Portuguese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, was terrified. He walks into this fucking dark hotel room right. with Benito del Toro, much like I was in the story I told you, wearing sunglasses and a wife beater, yeah. holding a three fifty seven Magnum. <laughs> right. Well, is this... Johnny Depp is crouched behind a TV, yelling, "You're not fucking Portuguese, Adam." <laughs> oh God, yeah. And I'm gonna go. <laughs> they train. He's ju- at one point. He's so fucked up. He the entire room is just n- destroyed, and he's just in the bathtub. Yeah. And it's just like, oh well, Jesus, we're, 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 that's way in the, into the story. Uh, this movie is borderline <laughs> incoherent. It's insane. It's it, this. The worst part about trying to like deep dive into this movie is that it's basically just moments. Oh, it, it definitely is. Because it's like, but surprisingly, it play. It it definitely follows the book. Yeah, sure. It's exactly how the book is written. Oh, I could imagine because it's the recount. Of a drug fueled bender in Las Vegas, so it's like, yeah, and then and then we were in the restaurant, and everybody was a, a lizard, and they were all just fucking. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh god, of course that's what happened. <laughs> of course that's well, of course. Like, I don't think they even made it to the Mint Four Hundred. Uh, kind of. They, they they kind of did. Yeah, they they, they, they kind of did because uh, they <laughs> they they're standing there and. And uh, and the race starts. They got to the start of the race, and yeah. uh, we're we're in the press tent. We were treated to a Mark Harmon cameo. Oh yeah, he's and, so handsome. And um, and then Lacerda pulls up with his uh, jeep full of camera equipment. Yeah, and says, "Come on, we're gonna go chase the race." So Hunter jumps on top. Raul Duke jumps yeah. uh, jumps into the truck, and they go out into the desert. They run across some. Militia people with a deer on the hood of their car. Again, who knows what's real? Who knows what's drug fuel? All right. I know is is Johnny Depp was holding his beer the whole time. Yeah, as it got filled with more and more sand. Yeah. So when, when he gets out of the truck, he pours it over. And it's just mud. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's just. He's like, you're fucking fired. I'm going back to the casino. Right. <laughs> Oh Christ! I, just, I love this movie. Yeah, so they get back to the casino, and uh, they they meet uh, meet back up with La Serva, uh in the elevator. Yep, featuring the Cameron Diaz cameo. Yeah, she's that happened. A, yeah, she's just a, this random reporter, and again, that's part of it too. Where it's like it's really just them uh, assaulting people in Las Vegas, right? And the thing is, is it's just like Cameron Diaz is only in this movie so that you can just. Have a like, why the what is that? Like you, you feel like you're on an acid trip, right? Well, well, most of I mean, most of these cameos came across because of the book. I mean, it, it was yeah. just people that wanted to be involved with this movie, right? Um, I mean, Harry Dan's, Dean Stanton shows up as a judge. He's yeah. actually the one that read the audiobook. 
Oh, okay. Uh, you know, it was just, it was so many people just, once they, it was like, oh, they're making Fear and Loathing a movie. Yeah. I, I don't give a shit. Give me a day. I want to be part I of it. I just want to be a part of it. Right? You know what I mean? Uh, Christina Ricci shows up as, as Lucy. Right. Yeah. You know, she's historically uh, very good friends with Johnny Depp, but also just into that whole yep. Hunter Thompson culture. It's just, yeah. it's a weird thing. There's that famous photo of, of Johnny Depp, John Cusack, and Hunter Thompson in a convertible with a blow up doll. Weird. Because yeah. they just hang out together doing that stuff. That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, John Cusack did Fear and Loathing the play for years before the movie ever existed. There were just people that wanted wanted very heavily to be involved in all this. Uh, the producer is, is very good friends with um, with Joan Cusack. And she talked about a lot about that on the, uh, the the commentary track of how her and John kind of facilitated getting Johnny Depp involved in the movie. Okay. Yeah, Johnny. It's one of the more. It's it's the the Blu-ray is Criterion, so th- there's three commentary tracks. There's Terry Killiams. There's uh, the I forget the producer's name, but the producer with Benito del Toro and Johnny Depp. And then right. there's Hunter Thompson, his assist his assistant. And Cassavetti. All, hmm? pa, uh, pa, Cassavetti. He was the producer. No, it was a she. Oh, then I don't know. I'm not sure what, what her name was. I'm, I'm yeah. Too too many screens open. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. But 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 there. Of course, just extremely informative. It's not like that that standard, you know, oh, we'll just clip together interviews and make it a commentary yeah, track. It's right. like they actually were sitting down together and just kind of Talk. bullshitting about yeah. the movie, which was extremely interesting. Always good. Um, I, it's it's one of those movies. It's like, I don't even know where we are, but it doesn't really fucking matter. No, because it doesn't matter. It's all about moments. I right. mean, like... I watched this movie like three days ago, right? And I don't remember anything. Again, it's like being in a drug fueled bender. I remember, it really is. I remember lights, sounds, Johnny Depp, <laughs> and then a myriad of celebrities that are like, "Was this person like you said, Christina Ricci?" And I was like, "Yeah, I thought that was Christina Ricci, yep. but it also could have been Kimberly from the fucking Power Rangers." <laughs> like, I don't, I have no idea what I watched. Right, I have no idea, and I've seen this movie several times. Um, I mean, and and it was the movie itself was just full of that weirdness, like even. The, like, like I said, having the the Criterion Blu-ray, like watching the the documentary stuff, Johnny Depp lived in Hunter Thompson's basement for like three months. Yeah, of course, he he, did. he talks about like, oh my 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 nightstand was a keg of gunpowder. Uh, I would wake up every morning, go upstairs, and Hunter would shave my head with a Bowie knife, wearing a miner's helmet. Yeah, that happened. Sure. <laughs> because you can't just go to set and have you know a set hairdresser shave your head. No, Hunter is going to actually shave my head the way he wants me to look. Yeah. That type of weird shit. Like yeah, the that... fact that he just showed up one day and like, okay, let's put him in this scene, which was The Matrix, where um, they, they had Jefferson Airplane playing in the background. They was doing a flashback thing about having... Uh, taking acid with flea of oh, red hot yeah, chili peppers right. in the bathroom. Yeah, and as he's walking by, and he's like, "I was just another freak." There I was, and then, holy shit, there I am, and it's actually Hunter Thompson sitting there lighting a cigarette. It's right. Like, That's... What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's so fucking goddamn weird. Um. So at a certain point, yes, we do get back to the hotel room, uh, which is just littered with garbage. Uh, they've uh, had many, many days of just. Room service upon room service upon room service. Forty-seven, uh, you know, fucking grapefruits and <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, and trays, and and now Benito del Toro's character, which uh, del Toro gained forty pounds by eating donuts for the role, at, as yeah, sure. as he said, as you do, sure, I guess, um, is is in the bathtub, and he's ate literally all the acid. Oh yes, and all he wants is for Raul Duke to throw their tape player into the bathtub with him when White Rabbit peaks. Yes, that's right. To reach the <laughs> ultimate high. Yes. And what do you do in a situation like that where as they say in the movie, he's si- sitting there drugged out of his mind waving a razor sharp hunting knife in your eye. <laughs> it's just you hit him with a grapefruit and run the fuck out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Because it just doesn't it's it doesn't matter like oh god it's just so insane <laughs> it's so insane cuz yeah why why it somehow makes all the sense in the world you're right it somehow makes all the sense in the world 
It, well, it absolutely does. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, it's like watching one of those, like, Tim and Eric Awesome Show, Great Job. Yeah. Or the Eric Andre Show, where it's like, I have no idea what I'm watching, mm -hmm. but I'm compelled to keep watching. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Depp does a great job in this movie of keeping you captivated because it's very similar to like the entire movie is like being the sober friend when all of your other friends are just hammered on St. Patrick's right. Day. You're the <laughs> right. you're the designated driver. And so fortunately they never interact with you so they never annoy you to the point of like right. i'm ready to get out of here and fuck these assholes <laughs> right? right but it's just very much just like what what do you mean you now are just sitting in the bathtub and want a tape player to get thrown in when white <laughs> rabbit peaks none of those words make sense Stop it! Why did you just throw I a grape? To hit that perfect note when right there it peaks. It's like why? Like why did you just throw fruit at him? Where the hell are you going? He's holding a shower curtain like a spear. <laughs> going get back there, you stupid bastard! I may have. I'll fucking spear you. I may have. What? Yeah, yeah. It's it's nonsense. It's absolute, absolute, utter nonsense. You're lucky they gave us a room. You're sitting down there yelling all kinds of obscenities, waving that fucking Marlin spike in their eye. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they go by, uh, at one point, they're just driving around Vegas, and they stop by the Debbie Reynolds Casino for yeah. a Debbie Reynolds show. Yeah. Actually, Debbie Reynolds did the voiceover. Oh, great. Uh, because Terry Gilliam was friends with Carrie Fisher. That's how yeah. that connection happened. Yeah. And they got Debbie Reynolds to come in and record some voiceovers. It's her mom. Uh, yes, it is. That's, if, if, if y'all didn't get that one, yeah. But yeah, they, uh, they, they you actually said that this it. was your favorite movie. One of many, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely top five for me. Debbie Reynolds is in one of my favorite movies. All right, Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that at some point. Sure, it's very different from this drug field. Maybe better. when I get back from Vegas, if I get back from Vegas, we'll definitely do that we'll movie. Do <laughs> Can we do Musical Month? Maybe if I get back from Vegas, we'll have to do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's that's the line we're going with. If I get back from Vegas, yeah, metaphorically, spiritually, physically. Vegas has a no. <laughs> yeah. He went to Vegas, and he never returned. Oh, see, that's a Hangover Two reference. <laughs> oh, jeez. Vegas has him now. <laughs> yeah, I, Thailand you, has him now. <laughs> I've never seen the sequels to the Hangover. Oh, I own them both. Oh, fun. Yeah, they're not great. Yeah, I, that's why I haven't seen them. The, the second one is the first one by numbers, and the third one just isn't good. Yeah. Yeah, just John Goodman's in the third one. He is. <laughs> it was That's on TV only, last night. <laughs> is that the only good thing in it? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, it, here, here's the th <laughs> thank okay. you, Bill. Yes. That's the second one. All right. N next week is the Hangover show, but let me just say this: the third one would have been good if it had nothing to do with the Hangover. Right. Like if it, if they just made a movie based on the premise that had nothing to do with the Hangover and just gave those actors different characters, right. it would have been an okay movie. Sure. Sure. Been, you know, but you're watching it like The Hangover, and every time you watch The Hangover, you're like, I just, I just want to see those guys doing, doing Vegas stuff. Yeah, right. I don't want, I don't give a shit that they, they're trying to break into a, what are they, cat burglars now? Is this Hudson <laughs> Hawk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is in the archives, no way to the stars. Hudson Hawk was terrible. Oh, Mara speaking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so we get to Bazooka Circus. Oh mm. God. Which is, of course, Circus Circus without the yeah. rights. <laughs> yeah, none of this is, has rights. No. The uh, only one that f was the Flamingo. Uh, yeah, but they were even filming in the Flamingo, though. Yeah. E everything was a set. There was um, the only part that was actually filmed in Vegas was when Duke goes downstairs after um, after the, the, the radio incident, after the, ba right. the bathroom incident with, with Gonzo. Where he throws the coconut at him, and, and he has to fucking put him in bed and just go to sleep. You, you yeah. shit your pants, but you know, big boy. Yeah, right. Um, and he goes downstairs at like three o'clock in the morning and does some gambling. That was the only thing that was actually filmed in Vegas, and it was like a old North Vegas casino. It was yeah, like, the, the and every, him. everybody was actual people. Like the dealer, he goes and spins the wheel with. Yeah, it's was like... ac that's actually how that woman looks at like two o'clock in the morning when she's spinning the wheel for Vegas. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? When yeah, they just showed up with some cameras and started filming. Man. Pretty much. It's like, yeah. here's Johnny Depp, here's a cameraman. It was like the when we did The Star is Born, it's like, oh, here's Bradley Cooper and here's a cameraman. Just react. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Act normal. This is, happens right. every day. Uh, but everything else was a set. Uh, and yeah, we get the Bazooko Circus, which is, of course, as I said, doubling for Circus Circus. Circus, circus yeah. And um, having been to Circus Circus, not in the 70s, but actually in the 
early 2000s. It's a little different. <laughs> I've been to Circus Circus before, <laughs> but I don't it's remember. A little diff- it's a little different. It was also different when you were a child. Exactly. There, there, there is still the, 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 what would you call it, the Medway? Is that, is that where the... The Midway games? The, all the games and stuff. Yeah. Back, back in the day, there was probably people barking at you, like like right. carnival yeah, people right. that were like, oh, come come and try this and come and do yeah, this. Yeah, come and toss I, the I, ring. I guess that, that part of it still kind of is there. It's just a lot more toned down. Right. Don't um, they have an amusement park in there? Kind of. The, yeah, a little bit. It's more of a... a it, I mean, a circus. Yeah, right. There, there is... There are parts of this that are still very accurate while also being yeah. heightened by drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I went to that roundabout bar, which is the, the, the bar that's on the carousel. It's just painstakingly slow. Yeah, right. Like, they made it look, like, fun. Right. And like, it's oh, not... shit, I'm going to get on this carousel bar, and we're going to go around. And, yeah. and it's gonna... But it's like, it takes you an hour to make a full fucking rotation. Yeah, right. It's going and you're just like, oh, my God, this is nothing like the movie. <laughs> this is Can I have some acid so this makes fun? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have acid so this, this makes, makes fun? fun? Yes. Yeah, okay. uh, there, there is trapeze people, but there's no barking dogs or wolverines that are trying to bite, you know. Right, yeah. And they're, not ha- they're not, you know, impregnating the performers beforehand and then shooting babies across the oh, thing. Geez. I mean, that all happened in the movie. But again, drugs. But again, the drugs took hold. The drugs took hold. Um, the, the giant ape uh, statue that is outside of Bazooka Circus actually resides on one of Johnny Depp's front lawns. Okay. Only now he is giving the middle finger with an erect penis. Yeah, okay. That's yep. a true story. Sure. That was I found out on the commentary track on the Criterion. That's why you got to buy Criterion kids to yeah. find out fun facts. Like there's a big gorilla on Johnny Depp's front lawn with a big hard dick giving a finger. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, he seems like a fun guy to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, he's a weird. He seems like a weird guy to hang out with. I'd still do it. <laughs> yeah, sure. For story alone. Uh, but yeah, so we're at Bazooka Circus. Uh, Gonzo ha- just fucking freaks completely out. Yeah, and he um, takes off. It, it, what? It, it, one, what of the, point... one of the great moments where he's just like, <laughs> he's he's having a hiccup attack at the bar in that right. in the carousel bar, and, and and Duke just looks at him and goes, "Look over there, there's a woman fucking a polar bear." <laughs> he's don't tell me that shit. Can you loan me some money? I gotta leave the country. <laughs> What? Right. Well, at one point, at one point, doesn't Gonzo just take off, and then the next time we see him, he has all of his shit together. Uh, yeah, kind of. So, so he just so after this, they get back to the room, uh, or, or we cut to the room basically, and it's Duke waking up with what we appear is a Z carved in his yeah. head because that was the last thing he said to him because he was wa- he was waving the the hunting knife in his face right and uh duke had mace and he's like I'm I'll fucking mace you yeah. sit the fuck down you're trying to carve me up and he's like I'm not trying to carve you up I just wanted to carve a Z in your head yeah right so duke we we smash cut to duke sitting straight up with a gun and a knife in each hand yes and a big Z on his forehead which of course was ketchup yeah uh, but he looks in the mirror and has literally maybe two months worth of hotel bills hanging on the yeah. mirror. Everything's encrusted in condiments. Yeah. Duke, nowhere to be found. Yeah. And uh, he just kind of bails. Yeah. Yeah. He bails. He's like, fuck this. I am out. So he goes downstairs, gets his car. The valet basically says, oh, here's a telegram from Dr. Gonzo. He's like, but it's made out to somebody named Thompson. We don't have his record here. Because, of course, they're Raul Duke and Dr. Gonzo, not Hunter Thompson, Oscar right. Zeta Costa. Right. And uh, he reads it, and he's like, okay, fine, and, and uh, fuck off. And he's got a back seat full of, you know, all all of the hotel room. Yes. Soap, oh. dishes. Everything. Play, he just kept, and again, very realistic. Um uh, again, just I, I implore people to listen to the commentary track on the Criterion because right. Johnny Depp talks about actually staying in hotels with Hunter Thompson and him just collecting forty salt shakers. Yeah, everything he he would just keep ordering room service and just keeping all the salt shakers and just going so, home with them. Yeah, weird. He weird. just he had he had stacks of that that uh, the the orange soap, whatever that is, oh, Neutrogena, yeah. N- Noxema. Yeah, I think Neutrogena. Neutrogena, maybe it, it was the one that uh, Jack Nicholson had in As Good as It Gets. Okay, his, his whole mirror was full of that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just stacks of them because that's what they would give out in hotels. Right. And, and so that was it. Was again very realistic. But so he takes off into the desert, 
And uh, we're met by uh, highway patrolman Gary Busey. <laughs> yes. As you do. Yes, as you do. And uh, we, we learn uh, how to be pulled over appropriately in the mind of Raul Duke. Yeah. Don't pull over right away. Yep. Keep driving. It, it, it makes contempt in the cop heart. Make the bastard chase you, but put your blinker on so he knows you're looking for an appropriate place to pull over and talk. <laughs> right. So we pull over, and uh, they have their their roundabout thing happening here, and and again, great great shit happening where he's he's just like, no, no, I I, I knew what I did. I'm a fucking criminal. I knew it. <laughs> just like I did it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was thinking going to Baker for some sea, seafood. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's out of his mind. Um, and the, and then yeah, we so he's caught in as he calls it this goddamn desert crossroad called Baker because we run back into Toby Maguire. Yeah, right. He just shows back. So up. he's cornered. He yeah. can't get out of Las Vegas, but he can't get back into Las Vegas because the cop will bust him if he goes back to Las right. Vegas. But he can't get out of Las Vegas because he can't see Toby Maguire because Toby Maguire obviously knows who he is because he remembers right. his fucking wacko. Yeah, right. Of course. So he calls Gonzo. Right. Because he needs legal advice. Yeah. And he's his lawyer. Yes, right. If, if you haven't figured that out, the maniac <laughs> with the hunting knife, on, head full of acid in the bathtub, is his lawyer. Yeah, right. Well, and that's the craziest part about it, when he shows back up and he's all lawyered up. Yeah. And because he's, he's like, I sent you the fucking telegram. We are fully covered at the Flamingo. Get your ass over there, because we're covering the fucking state police convention. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> the, DA, the DA, DEA, the DEA's convention. Uh, yeah, it's, which is so ironic. We're covering the drug convention. Get over to the Flamingo. So he heads back, show, shows up uh, with <laughs> obviously more Ill, drugs, <laughs> more drugs in a suitcase. Yeah, an ill-timed uh, arrival to say the least. And uh, yeah, we run into Chris Maloney playing the the, the hotel fucking bell guy, Sven. Yeah. yeah. And and he has an interaction. Yeah, of course. Full, well, full of dialogue we can't say in 2019. Yes, anymore. that's the big thing is yeah. that we can't. That he, he's yeah he he's playing a, a gay hotel desk clerk with a 1970s cop that is not having his no. way. No, no, no. To say the least. <laughs> no, and so we'll but skip you know, right over that. But <laughs> yeah, but uh, Duke uh, breezes right through. Yep. Sends up, sends up some you know some fruit and a quarter of rum and a whole bunch of room service and everything's cool with Sven. Yeah, right, exactly. And so, so we get in there, <laughs> right? Open the door and Lucy's biting his goddamn ankles like a fucking dog. Yeah, right, because she's high as fuck. And uh, Gonzo, Benicio uh, del Toro, is wearing the bed sheets. Yes, as you do. Yeah, right, because everybody's just all drugged out of their mind again. You know, when you abduct a teenage girl from Los Angeles International Airport, you show up to your hotel and just put on the bed sheets as clothes. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. Uh, she is a obviously child, yeah. and uh, she apparently is uh, a fan of Barbara Streisand. Yes, that well, that's why she wanted to come. She wanted to meet Barbara Streisand. She has painted many portraits of Barbara Streisand. Yeah, she's a off of television. Yeah. <laughs> and now she wants to present them to Barbara Streisand. Yeah, right. And uh, she's also very religi religious. Yep. We learned that. And uh, Benito del Toro says, uh, well, you know, I, I didn't even know until after I gave her the acid that she's never even had a drink before. Yeah, right. My right. bad, dude. <laughs> yeah, my, my bad. So. Y'all be good. They got to figure out this problem now. Right. Uh but there was a very uh, graphic exchange of dialogue in the hallway. Yeah, which I loved the uh, the the extras reaction was one of my favorite things in all of cinema, as they're walking by and hearing Johnny Depp say to Benito del Toro, a cruel Samoan who has penetrated her with his uncircumcised member. Yeah, right. And they just gasp in horror, and yeah, completely unscripted extra move. Yeah. Good for you guys getting your moment. Yeah, good job. You made your good moment. Good job getting your moment extras. It worked for me. But you didn't get a pay bump. Uncircumcised member. That is a hell of a way to describe something. Yeah, gross. And uh, so we get Lucy. Yeah. Throw her in the car. Take her down to the Americana Hotel. Yep, drop her off. Drop her off. We don't want to give her a name because, you know, my cousin's in politics. <laughs> and we get back to the hotel. Right. 
Get back to the hotel. Sven rings us up. You have a message, sir. Uh, Lucy call from the Americana <laughs> says to call her back. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, right. Didn't work. So. Benito del Toro calls her back. Right. And puts on quite the display. Yeah. So much so in the narration. Uh, Duke says, his performance was so good, I thought his mind had snapped. <laughs> and he actually thought that henchmen were stomping his face out. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that's right. He pretends that he's getting beaten up because he's foot, a part of... Foot soldiers, I think. Was yeah. it not henchmen? Foot the, soldiers were actually yeah. stomping in his face. <laughs> yeah, because he's under investigation or some, some something crazy. He's got Lucy on the phone. He basically... Uh, pretends to get pretends his ass kicked. To, to, yeah, be abducted by police or whoever. Right. And uh, all the while... He had already given Duke his uh, little little bottle of adrenochrome, yeah, right. which is a, a completely made up drug that oh, yeah. Hunter Thompson made up just for the book. Uh, but for for argument's sake, it is the uh, the extract of the adrenal gland of a living human being. Oh, right, the okay. adrenaline gland. Excuse me, right, of a living okay. human being, which sends them into ugh, definitely the weirdest fucking phase of this movie. Yeah. Where he's just, I mean, fuck acid. This this yeah. stuff just sends him over the fucking deep well, end into right. hell yeah, <laughs> and right. beyond. He just basically, like, greens out mm. <laughs> is, like, what ends yeah. up happening. Uh, Benito del Toro turns into a big, like, uh, wolf beast with horns and, That's right. and yeah. tits on his back and hair everywhere. Yeah, it's and, and And Nixon's head's floating around the office and uh, just a mess. There's, a, there's horse hooves in the toilet. It's just a mess. Yeah. He wakes up uh, with a lizard's tail attached to him and, and waiters, you know, like uh, like if you're going to water, like the, the hip hip waiters. Yep. And uh, the, the room is full of water somehow. Yeah. This, this flamingo suite is full of water. Of course it is. Or liquid. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, the, you don't really want to know what it is. The bed has a giant burning smoldering hole in it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Gonzo's gone again. again. <laughs> Yeah. And so now Duke is recounting what had happened. Right. Because he had a tape recorder strapped to his chest with a microphone taped to his face. Yeah. So he basically so he has a recording of he everything. He tries to play it back. And the funniest part is in the book, there's a little, there's like a page that just says, there was no notes for this part of the, no of this part of the story. We just are going to recount the transcripts taken from what we could understand off of these tapes. Okay. And it's just a transcript of nonsense. Yeah, of course. Um, the stuff with the with the white convertible at the supermarket was just fucking them them beating on the car. Yep. And and people trying to get them to stop. Uh, you guys voted for Hubert Humphrey and you killed Jesus is one of my favorite lines in <laughs> cinema history. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you know, and, and then we get the uh, the interaction with the maid okay. who showed up yep. and they pretend to be part of the DEA convention and sh they basically recruit her to be like, yeah, to be a drug um, spy. Yes. You're gonna find the with drugs. the worst instructions ever. Yeah. If if you if if anybody questions you or you run into trouble, don't don't back down and yell in their face. I fear nothing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Which you should do at a drug convention. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just act okay. crazy and yell. I fear nothing. You won't get shot. I swear to God. Yeah. No, you've done it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so basically, he ends up. Figuring out, like he ends up basically just dropping Gonzo back off at the airport, and that's how this whole yeah. thing wraps up. I mean, basically, yeah. Like it basically just ends up with him being Cause, like, because they do go to the they go to a conference, right? Um, which which is just hilarious in its own right. The the fat couple behind them making out, and right. and the speaker, which is trying to explain the the levels of you know, 70, 60s and 70s drug culture, which is like, yeah. you know, square and hip and groovy right. and, and cool. And, yeah, and it's weird. And and there's just, there's just so many, mo uh, again, so many moments where it's like uh, uh, the, exp explaining the dope fiend. Yeah. 
You, you won't be able to see his eyes because they're covered by T-shades. His knuckles will be white from inner tension. Yeah. And his pants will be crusted with semen from constantly jacking off when he can't find a rape victim. Yeah. Right. This is all in the book. Yeah, of course. This is a fucking <laughs> New York Times bestseller. Oh, yeah. Yep, it's insane. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this movie just ends with him, like, just going back to the hotel, finishing the article, and then just, like, heading back to Los Angeles. Right. In the convertible. Yeah, as you do. And it's like, oh, so... Drops him off at the airport. Too weird to live, too young to die, something yep. like that. <laughs> yeah. Too rare to die. I don't know what the fuck the, the actual quote was. I'm butchering all these quotes, but... Yeah. But still, it's it's just... Yeah, he, he crashes through fences and stuff, and again, it's just... It's all in the book. Yeah, of course. And yeah, I'm I'm not naive enough to be like, this is a true story. Yeah, mind right. you, I'm saying it's all in the book. I'm not saying it's a true story. Yeah, right. Of course. You know what I mean? It's it's the it's the ranting and ramblings of a highly drug addled mind. Yeah, right. This guy that did go to Vegas and do a shitload of drugs. Yeah, this guy's a madman. Yes, this guy's a madman. This is the man who wanted his ashes shot out of a cannon and got his wish. Yeah, of course. Paid for by Johnny Depp, by the way. Yeah, of course. When 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 Hunter killed himself, uh, they made that big Johnny Depp paid for this big giant cannon to be in, constructed, and it was made in a big black uh, Gonzo fist. Yeah. And they shot his ashes out of the cannon. Yeah, of course. This is the person that you know wrote the book. Yeah, <laughs> right. And so he's a crazy person. I mean, it's a very odd. It's a very odd. Other just, I mean, other notable cameos. We had uh, Lorraine Newman in there. Yeah, Vern Troyer. Uh, Vern Troyer showed up. Debbie Reynolds, we mentioned, doing the voice. Yeah. Um, Penn Jillette was one of the Barkers in, in Circus Circus. Okay. Uh, Lyle Lovett was the guy who gave them the acid in the bathroom. Uh, Flea was the guy who took the acid in the bathroom. Yep. Gary Busey, we mentioned. Yep. Uh, Christopher Maloney, we mentioned. Christina Ricci, we mentioned. Uh, Ellen Barkin. Okay, Ellen Barkin in that scene in the diner. Okay. Where they had just, where as they said, when you go to North Vegas, you've fucked up one too many times on the strip and you're just not allowed back. Okay. And they're in that diner and you can see it's just one of those really like, it's one of the few like actual dark moments in the movie yeah. that's not played for laughs at all. Right. Where yeah. Benito del Toro is terrifying this waitress with a knife. Oh, yeah. And he's just... Yeah. It's just dark for dark's sake. Yeah, it's But very... it's one of those things It's like, yeah, well, you know, eventually the drug's got to come down. Right, exactly. And you're going to just sit there and want a piece of pie and coffee, but, you know, the guy next to you is going to want to yeah. stab the waitress. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Because he's still not <laughs> totally down Cause, yet. Because yeah, he's a legit psychopath in real life, despite the drugs. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. So that's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That's that's definitely some of it. Yeah. <laughs> that is definitely yeah. some of it. Just watch the movie. Seriously. Well, uh, I, I highly suggest watching the movie. Uh, th- this is one, one of those things I would I would call, in my opinion, a buy. Yeah. Buy the movie. Buy it on Criterion. It's not that expensive. No. Uh, and you get a shitload of fun special features on it. As I mentioned, the three commentary tracks, uh, the documentary with uh, Johnny Depp basically doing video diaries from Hunter Thompson's basement. Yeah, weird. Reading letters. You get voicemails that Hunter Thompson left for the actors during the shoot and stuff. Um, and and just, just, it's such a fucking bizarrely awesome movie. Um, I, I can't recommend Fear and Loathing Las Vegas enough. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so that, I guess, would be Fear, Fear Lo- in, in Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Uh, coming up next week, we're back in Vegas again, or we haven't left. Nope. The Hangover. Yeah, a movie that I famously said was way better than planes, trains, and automobiles. So next week, uh, Liam finally gets to defend yeah. his hatred of the John Hughes classic planes, trains, and automobiles in favor of The Hangover. Yeah. And I want to see the, the the vampire version. It would have been better. The vampire version of The Hangover? Of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, that's right. What are we listening to, Bill? Uh, candy Shop. Why? Oh, the damn ba- The damn band. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It took me a minute. Jesus You're Christ. You're off today. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> so, great 
tune into the radio show. Oh, yeah, we that'll, do that, too. That'll be up on uh, North Shore 104.9. You can listen to it on 104.9.com. Saturday mornings, 9 o'clock. And then basically we'll have Thank that you, up. Thank you, Bill. This is much better. <laughs> we'll have that up uh, probably around like 1231. Yeah, around there. So that. you can listen to here on NAI Pop. Yep. Uh, so stay tuned to all that fun stuff. I saw the uh, Captain Marvel movie. Yes. And I'm going to talk about it on that show. Can't that. wait to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, by all means, follow New Age Insiders Pop on all forms, uh, on all podcasting apps. Follow us on all forms of social media at Mike Went, at Liam NAI, at Bill Neville NAI. And you can get all of our audio and video archives on demand at NewAgeInsiders.com. Be sure to uh, tweet us, hashtag that movie show. Let us know what you want us to review, watch, or just say, yeah. say hi. Hi. Say hi. Just like that. We're fucking friendly people. Say hi, motherfuckers. Yeah, Bye. bitch. <laughs> Bye.